Let's have a look at types of computers. You might think you know what a computer is, but do you know that there are actually many different types of computers? Let's have a look. So we have the desktop. You're probably quite familiar with this one. A massive tower on the side, a monitor, keyboard and a mouse. Standard desktop computer. Very, very common, very popular up until a few years ago because now laptops seem to be taking over. A laptop a much more portable version of the desktop runs with its own battery supply and you can work even during load shedding so there's no excuse to not do your homework then we have netbooks sort of like a scaled down version of a laptop quite powerful though you'll see that it's um, it doesn't have a CD-ROM drive it, they probably don't have an actual HDD and hard disk drive spinning inside as well it's probably SSD a solid-state drive to save power as well netbooks are great for people who travel a lot don't need to have something that takes up a lot of space a tablet is also a computer very popular very common these days handheld touchscreen very very cool Smartphones. I think almost everyone today has a smartphone and again that's a complete computer system all on its own and you've probably read many times and I'm sure it's true as well that you have more computing power in your smartphone than NASA had when they put men on the moon. So think about that. That is exceptionally powerful what you have right now. IOT. Have you heard of that? Internet of Things. The Internet of Things. Basically, the concept is everything is connected to the Internet in some way. So everything becomes smart. Smart as in it's connected and it can be communicated and controlled via the Internet. For example, fridges are becoming Internet of Thing devices because you can see a fridge can actually have a full fully inbuilt or embedded computer system monitoring the temperature of the fridge the power the quality and state of the food if you're running out of milk if you need more of this or more of that and send you an email or an SMS or a message telling you so the Internet of Things is actually becoming a lot more common as technology progresses and prices come down other types of computers are single board computers for example this one here the Raspberry Pi Raspberry Pi is a teeny little board like this and it can do so many different things it's a complete computer system all on its own you can use it to create an alarm system or a remote control system control the, the garage doors or your gate motor it's actually very popular another one very similar to Raspberry Pi is the Arduino board also quite small very powerful and you can get it to program uh, all kinds of devices wearable technology is very common these days let's have a look at what we have here we have an example of a Fitbit this will track your heart rate check that you're getting enough steps in through the day track your sleep patterns for example the is it called the Apple watch or the iWatch I can't remember the Apple watch which a lot of my, even my students have which is crazy they have this watch and again you can use it to communicate with your phone or communicate with your laptop you can check your email and your messages whatsapp even on your phone uh, sorry on your on your watch here we have a very interesting uh, situation we have from head to toe wearable technology and you can see we've got glasses wrist watches embedded chips in the hand uh, shoes with microchips in trousers with a special uh, thread built into it it's conductive thread so it can conduct um, messages electricity wristband uh, the, even the shirt can have special material in this is kind of where I think we're heading in terms of wearable technology it's becoming more and more integrated into our normal everyday clothes have a look keep an eye on this and you'll see what happens Another form of wearable technology soon to be available I think for everyone is the Microsoft HoloLens. The Microsoft HoloLens is kind of like this these weird glasses you put on and it creates an augmented reality environment. We call it AR. And as you can see here, this guy is looking at this motorbike and he's got all these options in front of him. So if if I go ahead and just play some of the video here, 
Um, look at that, they're putting it on. There you go, have a look here. So he can see all these things. Augmented reality is where you see the real world and then a layer that gets put over that, that's augmented with technology. So for example here, have a look at these doctors training and practicing surgery or looking at the human body. That's not really there, that's all being projected via the HoloLens. It's a very, very powerful tool and I think we're going to see that coming into all aspects of our lives very soon. This is what you will come across, especially in your exams, dedicated devices. So here we have a picture of an ATM. We know what an ATM is, okay? an automated teller machine. Can an ATM make you a cup of coffee? No, it cannot. Can an ATM make you a burger? Unfortunately not, no. Ah, but can an ATM let you make phone calls? Still no, no, it can't. However, what does it do? It dispenses money. It lets you access your bank accounts and draw money or transfer money. It's a dedicated device. It's made for a single purpose, a single task. Here's another one, for example, a washing machine. Can a washing machine do your homework for you? You wish that it could, but it can't. How about play with the dog? Hmm? Well, not unless you put the dog inside. Do not do that. No, you can't play with the dog. The washing machine will do. It will just wash your clothes. That's all it does. It's a dedicated device. What about general purpose devices? What are they like? Well, a general purpose device is a device like a cell phone or a laptop, okay, or a tablet. And a dedicated device lets you do lots of different things. Let's have a look. So some of the characteristics of dedicated devices, they are portable. They're very easy to get around. Another characteristic, they allow you to multitask. You can do more than one thing at the same time. You could be answering messages while checking emails, while listening to a song. Accessible, in other words, accessibility. It's very easy for almost anyone to use these devices. A tablet or a phone are very intuitive. Touch screen, swiping, pinching, dragging, all of these, these gestures are very intuitive and easy to master. So they're very accessible in terms of how we can access the, the actual device. And they're versatile. They allow you to do lots and lots of different things. It's kind of like if you think about convergence with all the different devices put into one, Okay, all the different functions of the different devices put into one, they're very versatile. You can take a photo, you can listen to music, you can record movies, you can watch movies, you can send messages, you can check your email. It's crazy. The amount of stuff you can do just with a smartphone these days is ridiculous. So we're moving on to what we have, servers and clients. Now, I'm sure you've heard of this. If not, pay attention, please. What is a server and what is a client? Now, these are both computers. They're types of computers, okay? The server is the big bad boy. The client is not so big, okay? So think about those two pictures and I'll explain in a minute what I mean. So a server is normally a very, very powerful computer and it has a complete supervision and authority over the network that it oversees. So it will control the authentication, it will control everything that happens on the network goes through the server. On most networks you need a server. The client, well that's you and me, we're here in a classroom, our computers are all connected to each other, but we still go to a server for specific things. Here is an example, you can see there's our server in the middle and the clients all around, so that's a typical example of what we call a local area network, the LAN. You should know this by now. So the server gets requests from the computers and sends back its responses, backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards, all the time, depending on what it is you're looking for. It's kind of like, like this picture. That's what I was reminded of. It's this, 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 this. Uh, it's just providing all of this information to the clients all the time. So the server is very powerful. Kind of why I chose this picture, okay? It's powerful. It manages the authentication of all the clients on the network. I mean, what do you do when you get to a computer? You sit down and you log on. It can be a mail server, 
in other words when you are sending and receiving email it manages that it can be a file server where you save and store your data your files and then you access them again it can be a network management server in other words it manages the network it makes sure that everything is running smoothly that there aren't any issues etc and it can also be a web server in fact that's where websites are hosted you have to have a web server that serves the web pages so and we'll look at that when we do HTML this year as well. Here we have the client. Mm, not so strong as the server, okay? He thinks he is. He looks pretty serious. But this is us, okay? We're just users who are accessing the resources. That's all we're doing. We are requesting services, whether we print something or whether we're trying to save something. We're just requesting resources. It's a workstation. We call them workstations. A workstation is where you sit down, you have your laptop or your desktop. That's a workstation. It needs to connect to the server to have access to other peripherals. For example, the printer. A printer, if you want to print, we don't put a printer on every single computer. We couldn't do that. We can never afford that. What do we do? We have a printer that's dedicated to the network. And when you print, it goes to the server. The server then sends it to the printer for you.